I'm Sarah Bird. I'm Director for Clinical Integration at the Cancer Research UK Cambridge Cancer Centre at the University of Cambridge. So I'm the university lead for the new uh, Cambridge Cancer Research Hospital. Uh, and I have two main parts of my role. Uh, the first one is making sure that all our clinical um, research and our academic research is firmly embedded in the NHS settings at the Cambridge Biomedical Campus. But I'm also responsible for the Integrated Cancer Medicine Programme, where we use data integration to take all the different uh, aspects of information we know about our patients, such as imaging, genomics, and clinical informatics. And we use this data to build better prognostic models and clinical decision tools. So my connection to RFAM is that I was RFAM project leader for about three years, from 2010 to 2013, uh, and I took over from Paul Gardner. So my initial vision is, I think, a bit of a stretch because RFAM is very much a team sport. Uh, and I think, um, firstly, I think my vision was not to screw it up, to make sure that I still had something left when, when, I, when I finally departed. Um, and I think... Uh, it was kind of twofold. One was we were following to some extent in the footsteps of PFAM. We, you know, are PFAM's younger sibling. And in many ways, we can cut and paste the success as PFAM had. Um, and in some ways, we had far more challenges because the scientific landscape of RNA science is, is very different from that of protein sciences. And so I think when I was project leader, one of the things we were waiting for was Inferno 1.0. Um, and I think it was very much about getting to 1.0, Inferno 1.0 getting all the models updated to that. And I think we were in the kind of baby steps of planning for more genome-based annotation. And I think that finally happened in, in 2017. But yes, we spent, um, it was about getting Inferno 1.0 into, into RFAM and using that as effectively our standard. Ooh, successes. Let's start with that one. So building out new infernal, you know, I think I love working at Sanger. It was technical support was amazing and the environment was second to none. Um, and it was a complete playground with lots and lots of really cool tool sets uh, and, and stuff to play with. Um, I think successes, things that I look back on was, um, I think the team was a success. I really enjoyed working with people like John, John Tate and Jennifer Dobb um, and many of the kind of gang who are still, still around campus. Um, and we had some great summer students, many of whom have kind of remained in informatics. Um, I think I always thought the collaboration between us and Sean Eddy's group was, was a real highlight and something quite special to, to, the, to the Exxon Consortium. You know, Sean and Eddie were, were brilliant to work with. They were really inspiring people. Um, I think it challenges. I think some of our code is academic at best. I think it is, maybe was. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's amazing now. But I think the challenge was we're always around, you know, um, what do we keep carrying on and what do we tear down and start again with you know there's always a balance to to what you what you think the best use of resources are when you're maintaining a, a production production database like our um and i think uh, what is really interesting is that the our website still looks very very similar to to the website that that was in, existing when i was there um and i think the uh, that it's still going is a testament to let's say the quality of the code behind that but it has lasted so long So it's kind of where I expected it to be. Um, and first of all, I'm pleased it's still going. You know, it's been around a long time. I think that's that's great. Um, I'm pleased to see like genome-centric annotation has happened. I think that's a great thing. And I think that's, yeah, that was that was a no-brainer. And I'm glad to see that's happened. I'm kind of surprised that Wikipedia annotation is still going. I think that's a good thing. Um, and I'm glad that's worked out because I think it's a really uh, nice way of, of getting the kind of community-based knowledge into, into a format that's accessible. So I think that's great. Um, and also, I'm glad to see RNA Central took off. So that was just kind of in the pipeline when I left. Uh, and it's really nice to see, although I think RFAM is like one of the leading lights of RNA Central, it's nice to see that the community has grown and the informatics surrounding the RNA resources is really, is really taken off. Uh, so first of all, I'd like it to still be going. That would be great if it's still, still existing and still developing and still updating itself. Um, like personally, I would like to see more information on things like expression levels and mutations. Um, but I think some of that is an annotation and a curation problem rather than necessarily a, a technical challenge. Um, and I think there's going to be increasing body of evidence that uses microRNAs and other small RNAs as biomarkers for disease. Uh, and it would be really, really good to have access to that information um, through, you know, how that affects functions of, of the small RNAs that we think are involved in disease. Um, I would also like uh, long non-coding RNAs to be, no longer be problematic. Uh, but I think that might be a bit of a pipe dream. They were always one of the, the big challenges we, we had to work with. Mm -hmm.